Earlier this week, I posted a tweet asking people what kind of topics they wanted to see me talk about in another video, and I got a lot of really good ideas, but there were just a couple tweets that I saw that I felt weren't quite long enough for me to discuss in a, as like a whole video. So today, I'm gonna do like two mini videos in one. First, we're gonna talk about dealing with tilting in Smash. Second, we're gonna be talking about reaction times and if you need to have a good reaction time to be good at Smash. Let's jump in. So the first tweet is from Yumu where he said, it might be hard, but I want to hear your thoughts on dealing with tilting. So before we talk about tilt, let's first define tilt. So what is tilt? I got this from Wikipedia. I couldn't find like a good dictionary.com. So Wikipedia was the next best thing. And it, it says, Tilt is a poker term for a state of mental or emotional confusion or frustration in which a player adopts a less than optimal strategy, usually resulting in the player becoming overly aggressive. So this actually applies to Smash a lot, obviously. I'm sure anybody that's watching this, they probably tilted themselves at times. So in Smash, usually what happens is like, you get hit by some kind of jank, right? Or USD or do some kind of misinput. And then because of that, you're like, oh, well, now I'm, I have to get back in the game. So you, you start playing like too aggressively to try to get back in the game. But of course, it doesn't work out and you end up just falling further and further behind, which gets you more and more tilted. And then you just keep trying stupid options. It stops working and you lose the set and end up pretty upset about it. But the thing about tilt is that I think you can't really control it. And being tilted, it's kind of like an emotion, and you can't control your emotions. It's like a feeling that you have inside, and you can't control what kind of feelings are coming through you. So when you're in the game, you can't like just decide, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to be tilted anymore, I'm done feeling this. That doesn't make any sense. So the way of dealing with tilt isn't to try to like untilt yourself. I think it's more about controlling your response to the tilt. Because at the end of the day, you still can, even if you feel like that tilt is coming, you're still in control of saying, okay, you know what? I recognize this emotion, but I'm not gonna let it cloud my judgments and I'm gonna stick to my game plan and execute that game plan. So when it comes to tilt, I think an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Because once you're in that full tilt state, you're probably not gonna get out of it in that game anyways. But just by, by changing the way you think about the game, I think you can prevent yourself from even getting in that position to begin with. And yeah, rather than spending so much time trying to hard to untilt, look for what causes it in the first place. So I think that's the first key thing is figuring out what causes you to tilt and then knowing how you can try to avoid that. So I think a lot of people, they, they start to get tilted when they like, I don't know, get zero to death comboed, or they get hit by some stupid combo that kills them at a percent where they feel like they shouldn't have died at. Recognize what it is that's causing your tilt, and then you can try to fix that core issue. But I think the more important thing is just to accept the tilt. Because if you can just accept the bad things that are going to happen in game, you're not going to feel the tilt as hard to begin with. So if you're recognizing like, okay, I'm getting tilted a lot because I'm I'm misinputting and SDing. If you just get to a point where you just accept, you know what, like in this game, nobody is 100% consistent. Everyone, even MKLeo, even like the gods of Smash, whatever, everyone is going to SD at one point or another. So just know that even in bracket, it's going to happen at times. And it's not the end of the world if it does. It's just one tournament, it's just one game. So just accept that bad things will happen to you and you're gonna do a lot better mentally. People get tilted by jank, and they sometimes forget the times where they're carried by the jank, right? Like, you talk to people after sets, and they'll, they'll say like, oh, I, I should have won this match, but then I, I he took my jump and I died at 30. And then they're like, oh, I should have won this, I should have won that, and then that kind of gets them tilted. But I think if you're coming in from this perspective of just accepting the bad things that are gonna happen to you, you know that's gonna happen at some point, so it's not going to tilt you. You just accept it. Because at the end of the day, also, you're going to you're gonna take their jump at 30% and you're going to get free kills. So you forget those times where you're getting carried by the jank yourself and you just remember that as, oh yeah, I beat him, so I'm a good player. But sometimes you just janked your way out of it too. So in Smash, the, just the way the game is set up, there's going to be jank stuff that's going to happen. So just accept that it's happening and I promise you, you will not get tilted as hard. 
And also, you only have control over 50% of the outcome of the game. You only control your what your character does, right? Your opponent is controlling the other 50%. So, you can't... You don't have, like, that full control of the game. So you can't get too mad about it. Because even if you're playing at your best, you can't guarantee you're going to win every game. That That's just not possible. Even MKLeo, like, the best player in the world, probably by far, still loses games. So if you just go into the game... into the just go into the match accepting that bad things are going to happen and you're going to lose some games. It will help you, prevent you from tilting to begin with. And that's just the way I look at it. Uh, I'm sure other people have different methods of coping with it, but I think just the key thing is to just know what what's going to happen in the game and just accept it and just keep sticking to your game plan. Because if you stick to your game plan, you're not going to fall into that over-aggressive, poor play, tilting uh, kind of gameplay. That was number one. Let's go into the tweet number two I want to talk about today. It comes from Chevy, where this was actually from my video from last week. This was in a response to it. If you want to watch it, it's up here. Uh, I talked about just how, like, do you need, like, some kind of inherent genetic talent to be good at Smash? And Chevy says, I agree with all of your points in the video. However, I was expecting to see a card about reaction time. My assumption is that reaction time is genetic, and while I don't think that alone will push you to top level smash, I would expect it to affect your results in some way. Now, I would agree that there is a genetic component to reaction time, but I would argue that it doesn't play that big of a role in your smash results. So let's talk about reaction times first. Reaction time is the time interval between a stimulus and a response. I'm sure most of you have seen this uh, this uh, game here. I, I, what do you call it a game? Or like uh, just a challenge or like a reaction time measuring thing? I don't know what you would call it. But the idea is that you have a red box. You watch the red box and as soon as it turns green, you click. So what it measures is the time it takes from when the box changes from red to green to you clicking the mouse and it says, okay, that's your reaction time. And just genetically, everyone kind of has like a limit on their reaction time. Some people it's faster, some people it's slower. Let's talk about like the components of a reaction time though, because there's more to it than just like, all right, this is your reaction time and that's it. It gets a little bit more complicated because there's a few different things that, that you'll be faster and slower at, maybe just like by, by genetics, right? So first you have the time for the signal to travel from your eyes to your brain. It's not instantaneous from like your eyes seeing that red box turn green that your brain can already process what's happening. The the signal has to travel from your eyes through like some nerves or something. I don't, I'm not like a, what, what would you say? I'm not a, a anatomist. I don't know. I'm not like a, a scientist when it comes to this stuff, but it takes like time for that signal to travel from your eyes to the brain. Anyways, yeah. So uh, secondly, there's the time for you to process that response. So your brain has to take time to realize like, oh, that's that's not red I'm looking at anymore, that's green. And it has to decide what you want to do. So it has to see first, you have the, the signal goes from your eyes to your brain. Now your brain is saying, okay, that box changed from red to green. Now I need to click the mouse. And the last part of the reaction time is the time to execute that response, or in this case, actually clicking the mouse. So this is what would be like your simple reaction time is what it's known as, or SRT. When it comes to playing in a game like Smash, your reaction time is even more complicated than this. Let's break down what happens in a game of Smash. First, you see what your opponent does, what option they pick. This takes time for the signal to travel from your eyes to your brain. This is the same as from your simple reaction time. But once the signal gets to your brain, things look a little bit different. Because in our first example of just the box changing from red to green and clicking the mouse, there's no decision making in there. You're just clicking no matter what. But when it comes to a real game of Smash, you have to first process what your opponent did, what option they picked. Now you have to choose the correct response. So it takes your brain some time to realize, okay, he rolled? All right, well, the best punish is to turn around with a Smash attack. Then, of course, you have to three, execute that turnaround Smash attack. So this is what is known as your choice reaction time, CRT. Better players with better game sense and game knowledge are going to be much faster at their choice reaction time 
even if their simple reaction time is slower. It really comes down to like you're in in a real game. I think the the choice reaction time is much much more important than like your genetic simple reaction time because there's so many choices that are you constantly have to make. So in a, in a lot of games, sometimes I'm ledge trapping somebody, right? And I see they roll and I turn around and I grab them, for example. People will be like, wow, that reaction was like so fast. But the reality is that like, it's more somewhere between a read and a reaction. Because in my head, I'm like, all right, they're on the ledge. I'm expecting them to roll. And then as soon as I see it, it's really easy for me to react and turn around. However, an inexperienced player, when you're sitting on the ledge, they don't they don't have the experience to know exactly how to punish everything. So as soon as they see the roll, it's going to take them much longer to process what's happening, figure out what option they want to do, and then execute on that. And so it's going to feel almost impossible to punish that on reaction. But for the seasoned veteran, it's a lot easier. So the reason why I don't think your simple genetic reaction time makes that big of a difference is because your choice reaction time is much more important. It plays a bigger role and you can train that choice reaction time. As you get better at the game, it will get faster and faster. And so it will look like your reaction time in game is much faster. Another like point of evidence to this is just that reaction time decreases with age. Uh, or well, I guess if your reaction time decreases, that means it's getting faster. So your reaction time increases with age. Does that make sense? It gets slower. Okay, your reaction time gets slower with age starting around age 24. So if fast inherent simple reaction time was critical to being a top player, you should expect top players to be around the age of 24. Now, we don't really see that many Smash players that are older than 24 that are top players. A few in Melee, but I think the reason for that is more that Smash is still relatively young. So even like the oldest melee players, they're still like not that much beyond like their prime reaction time. So I think it's important to look into other games. Like if you look at other FGC titles like Street Fighter, these games that have been out for like way longer than Smash, you see pro players that are still winning tournaments in their 40s. So if this inherent genetic simple reaction time was like critical to being a top player, I think you wouldn't see as many older top players in Street Fighter, for example. So that's my two little quick videos for today, all wrapped up into one. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And maybe next week I'll take a few more of the, the questions that you guys have and I'll put them into another video like this. If uh, Maybe every now and again I'll do like a little Q&A type of video and I'll, I'll address more than one topic. But I think next week we'll probably get more into some specific stuff that you can do specifically in Smash to get better. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you next week. Peace.